2018 was an amazing year for music. We got so many great albums, but out of everything, I think there was one album that stood above the rest as the album of the year. It might not have been the best album in quality, but it was certainly the one you heard the most, and it was quite literally a cultural phenomenon to this day. That album is Astral World. <laughs> Astroworld was Travis's most ambitious album at the time, and it was loaded with bangers and features. And while I could talk about this album for days, today we're gonna not talk about it in the traditional sense. No, no. Today we're gonna be talking about it in a roller coaster sense. That sounded kind of stupid. Let me rephrase that. Today we're gonna be talking about every single reference to Six Flags Astroworld in Travis Scott's Astroworld. Wow, this is gonna be really confusing, okay. Real quick though, I do wanna preface this by saying I'm sure a lot of these things were unintentional or just flat out not true, but I wanna make this video because it's combining my two favorite things, music and coasters. So here we go. First, let's talk about the most obvious, the title. Six Flags Astral World was an amusement park in Houston, Texas, near where Travis Scott grew up. It had a bunch of roller coasters and rides like Batman, The Great Escape, Dungeon Drop, and Greased Lightning, all of which Travis actually named in an interview. It's kinda crazy that he still remembers them to this day. Astral World opened in June 1st, 1968, closed in October 30th, 2005. Remember the first day, it'll be useful later. If you want to know more about the park specifically, there's a great Defunct Man episode in it. I'll put it in the card above or the description. I don't know, it shouldn't be very hard to find. There's also a YouTube search bar literally right there. It started off as an independent park by Angus G. Wynn Jr., who like many other theme park developers, saw Disneyland and decided, hey, I'm gonna do that, but shittier. But this one wasn't shittier. Oh no, this one was a smash hit. So much so that it caught the eye of Six Flags and Six Flags ended up buying it out. Six Flags ran it for a couple of years and added their rides and their DC characters and everything, but eventually the park closed down due to financial issues that was messing with the whole chain. This was only a few years before Six Flags announced bankruptcy. They let go of a lot of parks, but Astroworld was by far the biggest deal. This was an iconic park for so many and as such has become a bit of a legend amongst theme park enthusiasts and probably Texans alike. Actually, I have nothing to back up this second statement. I just pulled that out of my ass. It, it is a legend though with theme park enthusiasts. Fast forward a couple years and now it's Astroworld's 50th anniversary and Travis Scott drops his third major album simply named Astroworld. I can only imagine this is because Travis was a fan of the park. So that's the history of the park and why the album was named after it and why the album is coming out now. But what about what's actually in the album? Well, let's start with the album cover. There's actually two album covers, one in the day and one at night. These two covers are pretty similar with a couple of key differences, most notably the naked women. But the one thing that's consistent among both covers is the rocket in the corner. It's not something you really focus on like the kids in the front or the giant Travis Scott head. But it's definitely intentional because it's in both in the exact same spot, and I think I figured out what it is. There's a pretty prominent extraction at Astro World called Looping Starship that was a spaceship with a somewhat similar design to the one in the album cover that would go in circles over and over again. This was likely a fan favorite of the park because these type of rides usually tend to be popular. Now the color scheme doesn't really match up very well with the album cover and this ride, but I will say there is a big ass observation tower in the middle of the park that has the same color scheme as the album cover, red and white. It's got that white body with the red accents. Put these together and you get the rocket in the corner. As for the rest of the cover, I don't really see anything else. There are flags in the corner that could be referring to six flags, but there are also like 70 of them, so I don't really think that's the case. Next, I took a look at the track list and one name jumps out to me, Carousel. Not only is this track actually fire with Mr. Ocean himself with two lovely verses, brand new, brand new, this new place but the title you. itself has to be a reference. I mean, come on, what other type of carousels are there? This has to be referring to a ride. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't know if there's an actual carousel at Astroworld because whenever I look up Astroworld carousel, just the song comes up, but given that these are quite literally a staple of every single theme park out there, including Disney, Universal, Cedar Point, Hershey Park, and so on, I'm thinking little old Astro World would want one too. So I'm counting this as a reference in my book. Even if it's not specifically to Astro World, it's at least referring to theme parks in general. Now we're getting to the actual lyrics of the songs. Let's start with the first track of the album, Stargazing. So there's one line in the song referencing Astro World directly, and I'm 100% sure this is a direct reference to the park because it quite literally says it is. The lyrics are, 99 to cash your wallet had to relocate Tell the dogs I bring it back it was a silly fan I really don't know where the 99 came from because the park closed in 2005 I thought the 99 could possibly be when Six Flags bought it and that was like it's downfall or something but nope that was 75 so uh 
Travis, you might wanna you might wanna fact check before releasing a song with 500 million streams. He also says relocate, which is true because a lot of the rides were relocated. Batman: The Great Escape, Serial Thriller, Mind Mindbender, and Dungeon Drop. However, many were also not relocated, like the famous Texas Cyclone. But there's more. In the very next line of stargazing, Travis says, "Tell the dogs I bring it back. It was a silly fact." Travis has never rebuilt Astro World, but he did have a birthday party at Six Flags Magic Mountain in California, where he rented out the entire park for a night, and he had notable guests there like Kanye. I guess that kind of counts as making a new theme park it's not as good as like a travis world or something but it's close enough but there is a possibility that we will see astro world in its original form because of travis he's not exactly rebuilding it but more like it just inspiring the park what i'm referring to here is a statement from mary turner that they'd be building a new theme park inspired by travis's tour to commemorate astro world travis performed in houston multiple times with a ferris wheel and a roller coaster as part of the set and the mayor was so impressed that he stated he would be building a permanent year-round full-scale amusement park in houston he then followed up with tweets saying he'd been speaking to investors and look for announcements in six to eight weeks. That was in 2019 and nothing. We have no idea what happened to this. I mean, there is one article, but it's locked behind this stupid paywall. I, yeah, yeah. I'm not paying for this. I'm sorry. I, I don't see any other articles, so I'm assuming it's canceled. It's possible that it could be still in the pipeline somewhere because this did come out in the late 2019, right before COVID hit, but it's very unlikely. It would have been dope though if Travis actually inspired a whole theme park. That would have easily been the biggest impact an artist have ever had in their home city. Bigger than any amount of money an artist had donated. Like an actual theme park. That would have been crazy. And yeah, that's everything. I know it wasn't actually that much, and trust me, I did do a lot of digging in the songs. I literally went through every song and used a fine command for every single ride name in the lyrics, and I got nothing. Nada. Zip. I think though, for a psychedelic rap album by friggin' Travis Scott of all people, six references isn't bad. So thank you for sticking around all the way through if you made it this far, and I will see you guys next time.